welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle I love the backstory about. Um, this puzzle is called, well, 11115555999999. Oh no, I think I put too many nines in there, but there should have been four nines. Um, and it's by Grockles and Gaby K9 is the pseudonym of the other constructor. But I happen to know that Gaby K9 is in fact Grockles' 12 year old son. And apparently they put this puzzle together one morning. Uh, Grockles is a rocket scientist in real life. So you, you get the idea of the brain power involved here. Um, and they took it in turns to add clues to the grid. So they would each add one of these quadruple clues at a time until they ended up with this puzzle, which has an enormously high approval rating on Logic Masters Germany. And I am looking forward to giving it a go. Is the son of a genius also a genius? Let us, we're going to discover that together. This of course is a 159 puzzle. Many of you will be familiar with that uh, by these red stripes in the grid. And I think this is a particular favorite of those who uh, have an appreciation and an aficionado for um, computer programming. Uh, because I think the indexing that's involved here, apparently, you know, it slots into those people's brains very well. Uh, so if you are a computer programmer and you're new to uh, Variant Sudoku, this might be a good one to try. Um, before we kick off today, I'll start off with a birthday wish. I would like to wish Megan a very happy birthday. It's your 22nd birthday, I think. Uh, your boyfriend Joseph told us this and said that you might appreciate a shout out. Um, and uh, I hope you also appreciate the Patreon subscription that Joseph's bought for you. That is, I mean, that is a quality present. Um, and of course, Megan, we hope you have a great deal of cake on your birthday. Although if you're in the UK, it is, it's almost too hot for cake. That is how hot it is. It is crazy hot. Um, now, what else have I got to tell you? We are we are closing in, believe it or not, on 500,000 subscribers on the channel. I've been busy at work on this, this topic over the last couple of days. Um, there's a couple of things we're doing to say thank you um, to all of you out there who've supported us over the over the time, over the years now. I got a, I got a message on Twitter today saying that we're, it's our five year Twitter anniversary and it has been five years since the channel started. Um, so what we're doing is our book, which came out a while ago, Cracking the Cryptic Greatest Hits. I'll try and show it to you. It is absolutely wonderful. Uh, also includes certain biographical backstories about what's, uh, that we're gonna tell you about Mark. Well, it's a story about Mark and when he sat next to Jeremy Clarkson on Concord. Um, and then there's also some stories about me in there as well and about the time I nearly killed Stephen Hawking, for example. Um, anyway, if you do want the book, we have a few copies left and there is a coupon code under this video for you to get it more cheaply. So uh, check that out. Um, and there should be a link under there to where you can buy the book. Um, now, the other thing we're doing, and this is taking up more of my time, is we are going to release a free app um, containing basically a pack of puzzles by some of the great and the good of the Sudoku community. So this is gonna be completely free. It'll be available on all platforms or all normal platforms um, as and when we re reach 500,000 subscribers. I've been actually overwhelmed as well by the kindness of some of the constructors out there who are really keen to be involved in this. Um, and have contacted me over the last few days. We have got already an app, a stable of wonderful puzzles um, from yeah, just fabulous constructors. So this is very exciting. Um, and yeah, so if you want a free app and you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Um, now, all that said and done, let me get on. I, I don't know what to call this. Four ones, four fives and four nines. That's what I'll call it. Um, by Grockles and Gaby K9. Gaby, yeah, so I wonder if... Um, Grockle's son is called Gabe and is a Doctor Who fan. That's what I'm thinking with K9 in the pseudonym. Um, anyway, maybe 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 either Grockle's or Gabe will let us know. Um, the rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits in a circle must appear at least once in the four cells touched by the circle. So these four cells here have to include the digits one and four at least once. You could actually, I suppose, do something like this and have them in twice. Um, but uh, they must be in there at least once. Now, here's, here's the indexing rule. A digit in column one indicates the column in which the digit one appears in that row. Now that sounds complicated the first time you read it, but it's actually really simple. Imagine this square was a seven. 
This 7 is indicating the column in which the digit 1 appears in this row. So that would simply be saying that cells are 1. Now the rule works identically for column 5 for the digit 5. So imagine this square here was a 3. If that square is a 3, that's saying the 5 in this row goes in the third column. So that would be a 5. I'm trying to pick these so that I don't clash with the clues, but I'm probably doing a terrible job. Now, the, the final column is, telling, is indexing the 9s. So let's make this square here an 8. That would be telling us that the 9 in this row goes in the 8th column. So it goes there. So it, the, rule, the special rule only applies for 1s, 5s and 9s. Um, and uh, actually there are some examples given in, in the instructions as well, but I've just done some examples. So hopefully that's all clear. Uh, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Oh, I know what I should do. I should tell you the secret of one fives and nine, shouldn't I? One five nine puzzles have an interesting property, and I only found out this property myself, having solved several of these puzzles on the channel and not really been aware of this this property. So let me tell you what this property is. Um, let's come down to this box, and I want to think about these three cells. Um, and there is an, the, the the secret is that one of these cells must be a low number by which I mean a 1, 2, or a 3. One of these cells must be a medium number, a 4, 5, or a 6, and one of them must be a high number, i.e. a 7, 8, or a 9. And it's really obvious once you think about it, but until you think about it, it's sort of strange. Um, why does this matter? Well, let's think about whether we could possibly have a 1 and a 2, for example, in this string of digits. And you can't, because this 2 is telling us that in this row, the one needs to appear in column two. So it would be there and you get a repeated one. If this was a three, that would be a one and this would be a one. So, you, so in order to not end up with two ones in the same box, you can only have one low digit in those three cells. Similarly, you can only have one of four, five and six. If you try and have two, you'll end up with this pattern, which obviously will be incorrect. So that, that is important to bear in mind in these puzzles. That is the best trick I've got for you. Now, but I'm not going to start with that. I'm going to start off with the quadruples, which are forced. That's got to be 1, 2, 8, and 9. This has got to be 2, 3, 5, and 6. This has got to be 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going full pencil marking today. And then we're going to stare and see what that tells us. Oh, I've actually got 1, 5, 9 clues. Oh, right. I've got, I, I've understood the title for once. Okay. One, two, three. There are four ones given in, in the circles. So presumably there are four fives. One, two, yes, three, four. And the four nines, one, two. Ah, uh, no. Oh, there are not four nines. Oh, that's strange. Now I'm wondering whether whoever's put this in the software has actually has actually done the title correct. I will have to check that. I can only see three nines in the clues. Um, hmm, okay, that might be an error. If it was, I suspect it wasn't a deliberate one. Um, okay, I mean, I can see twos are in common between these digits. I suppose what we can do here, yeah, okay. Let's use the secret here on these digits. One of these digits must be a low digit and the other one must be a high digit because we can't use one and two here or eight and nine here for the reasons I just explained. So that means that in this row, or in these rows, I should say, because there's an eight or a nine in one of those squares, there must be a one in one of those two squares or one of those four squares, I suppose, which is a weird pencil mark. Ah but a beautiful one because that plonks a one in this cell. So just check that you see why that is because basically where does the one go in row six? It can't be there and it can't be there because of these pencil marks. So it's got to be here because it can't be in these two squares. And that tells us this square is a four because the one, don't forget the ones are always indexed in this column. So we can always do something like that. And 
one now. Ah, ah, beautiful. Right. Look at this. Now, ordinarily, this wouldn't catch my attention, but because I've been thinking about the secret, it has caught my attention. In this box, there's a two, three, and a four in those cells, but I know one of these digits has to be a low number. Well, it can't be a two or a three. So there must be a one in this sequence of digits. And if there's a one there, there's not a one here, which means there definitely is a two, because remember, this can't be an eight, nine pair. So these can't have two in them. And, and there is a one now in one of these two squares. Because there's a two in one of these two, there is a one in one of these two, which means there is now a one in one of those two. This is so strange and clever, isn't it? And the, because we've got ones here, ones here. So by Sudoku, there must be a one in one of those three, but the one five nine tells us the one in this box is in this two by two. Now, if there's a one in one of those, there must be a three in one of those to index the third column for where the one's appearing. And now, OK, so now you can see we've disposed the low digits across the boxes. We've got a one in this one, a two in this one and a three in this one. And that's exactly what we'd expect. OK. So can we improve upon this? What is the next trick we're going to have to do? Mm, not got anything yet. Two, three and four here. Um, yeah, here's a, here's a small point. What's the medium digit in this string of digits? Well, it's not five and it can't be four, so it must be six, which means there must be a six in one of those two cells, which actually means that's not the six. This is crazy. That's given us a three, six pair here. That is so strange. I mean, if you weren't familiar with the secret, you'd never get this or you'd get it right at the end of the puzzle. This is so peculiar. And now I've got an X wing on ones look which means I can ask where one goes in row seven. It can't go in those six cells, so it's got to be in one of these three cells, um, which means that this square, of course, must be, you've guessed it, a seven, eight, or a nine. So depending on which one of these is the one, this will index to that column. So that one, that column seven, column eight, column nine. Uh, we've got a one up here. Don't know if I can do something clever with that. Possibly. Ah, ah, I, I, no, I was about to say something that was absolutely incredibly stupid, so I'm not going to say it. Um, um, oh, no, 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 don't get stuck, Simon. So there must be an eight or a seven and a six or a four in here and a two or a three in here. Can we get something going on in this box somehow. Don't know. Oh, OK, so now I'm completely stuck. <laughs> this is not ideal. Um, how do we think about this so that we have some sort of there must be a five in one of those cells. Look, by the by, by the quadruple clue. So one of these two cells must index that five. So that means one of these, okay. Okay, that is, that is a little bit interesting. Actually, no, I'm going to qualify that. That is actually extremely interesting. Let's just think about this. It's quite complicated, but because there's a five in one of those four cells, that five, wherever it lives, has to be indexed by a digit in this column. Now that means there must be a six or a seven in one of those two cells. Now there cannot be, oh no, six and seven are, oh, seven is a high digit and six is a medium digit. So actually there can be a six and a seven. Although there couldn't be in this case, because then we, we wouldn't be able to put two fives into those squares, because five only appears once in this. So there is one six or one seven in here. Now, the thing that occurs to me about that 
is that whatever that digit is has to appear around there in the 5, 6, 7, 8 quadruple. So the 6 or the 7 that exists in these cells has to go in that cell around this 5, 6, 7, 8 quadruple, which is strange. I just wonder, and if that's a 6 or a 7, does that mean this digit? Oh, I want that to be restricted. How do we get a handle on that? Well, oh, I see, right. Okay, here is another point. What's the low digit that I need to put in these three cells? Well, it can't be a one, and it can't be a two in one of these cells because these cells can't include a five. So, there's, so there is a three in one of those cells along with a six or a seven, depending on which one of these is a five. So this, so then as there's a three in one of these two cells, there must be a five in one of those two cells. I mean, this has come out of the mind of a 12 year old child. It is just, it is crazy how clever some people are. So, what does that mean? There's a five in one of these. There's got to be, ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a three in one of these, so neither of those is three. So there's a three in one of these, but threes aren't indexed, so I don't think that's going to be very important. Oh, I see. Right. But one of these two cells now is a five or a six. In fact, exactly one of these two cells is a five or a six. I'm going to say exactly one of them, because they can't both be five or six for a beautiful reason. If, if these were a five, six pair, where would we put five and six around this quadruple? We'd have to put them both in this cell and it would be a Schrodinger cell, simultaneously five and six, oscillating until we looked at it uh, and then discovered that we'd gone mad. So this is not a five, six pair. There is a two here. There's not a two here. And whatever this digit is goes there. So that cell is a five or a six, which is probably important. Oh, well, it is important. Yeah, that can't be a six. If that's a six, it's telling us to put five in that cell, which is a six or a seven. So that's a five. Right. So that's a five, which means this is a six, seven, eight quadruple. Five is self-referencing because obviously this five in this row is indexing the column in which the five appears. And it is in column five. So this is six, seven or eight. Well, it's not six because that can't be a five now. So that cell is seven or eight, which means there is a, this is lovely. So there is a five in one of these, which means there's not a five in one of those, which means there is a five in one of these and not a six. So now we've, we've figured out how this quadruple works. So if there's a five in one of these, one of these is not seven anymore. So this is a, th oh, we've got a deadly three, six pattern. That's probably resolvable by five each somehow yes if we can work out which of these is a five it will determine how this three six otherwise deadly pattern unwinds so i don't think i need to be too concerned about that he says slightly worried um right so what does this mean i've now got well maybe i can do some trickery with Sudoku now. There's got to be a two in this quadruple and there's a two there. So the two in this row is in one of those three cells. Now, can that be the two? The answer is possibly. <laughs> if that's a two, that's saying this is a nine. No, that does not work because that can't be a nine because the nine's in that quadruple. So that is not a nine. This has now become a two five pair 
which means what does that mean I don't know I think this is still referencing seven yeah the, this is saying the five is in column seven or column eight so that's correct isn't it ah ah this is lovely though because now I can't put low digits in these cells apart from the digit one so the one must be on the right hand side which means that that's not a one which means that that's not a nine <laughs> um, so as there's a one in one of those there is a nine in one of these so there is not therefore able to be an eight nine pair so eight comes out of this this is a two nine pair nine comes out of this so this is a one eight pair and that's presumably very important somehow some way don't know quite what to do with that um okay what can we do next have we sort of I almost want to tick off these quadruple clues once I've used them, but I don't have a way of doing that really. Um, I need to have a low, ah, yeah, okay. I need to have a low digit in this domino here. Now it can't be a three and it can't be a one, so it must be a two, which means there must be a five in one of those cells. Okay, that's not that surprising given this one, five, nine, triple, but now, there must be a five by Sudoku in one of these cells, which means in this column, there must be a one to fit to, to point at this five. And therefore around this quadruple clue, there must be a one on the right hand side of it because we can't have a one on the left hand side of it, which means that's not a one. This is a one and therefore that's an eight. And now there must be a seven up here so this is a one five seven quadruple and there must be uh, oh I see and I could have got that actually from thinking about the fact there was a one in one of these two squares so that can't be seven now because the seven needs to index to one of these ones whichever turns out to be a one as Maverick predictably enough flies over the house um, Oh, hang on, I've just realized something else. This is a 159 quadruple, so it's got to have a one in it. So that's got to be the one, which makes that the seven. And therefore, that's not a one anymore. It must be a five and a nine around here. Do we know, do we know more than that? So, Hmm. Well, there's a five, the fives are marrying up, so we can now see that the five in this column has to be down here, which is, and it's not there. So the five is in one of these two squares, which is indexing the nine, and therefore that's, that has become a two nine pair out of absolute gibberish. Somehow that's happened. And now, what do we know about these squares? They've got to be one four seven and eight so there must be there must be a four in one of these because the four can't go anywhere else in the column and if there's a four in one of those indexing the five there is a five in one of these but that doesn't seem to be resolved ah but if there's a four in one of those where's the four around this quadruple it's got to be there which means that is not a four so that is not a five <laughs> Um, okay so 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 now let's come to these three digits again and note there must be a medium digit in this uh, configuration which must now be a six that's indexing the nine so there's a nine in one of those there's a nine in one of these by sudoku oh and there's a nine down here yeah okay that's fine no, oh, beautiful though. Look at this. Look at this. Where does nine go in row six now? Because we've got an X wing on nines there. So nine's got to go there. The self-referencing nine goes into this position. Um, so I can see three in this row now is in this domino. I don't know if that's somehow important. And then... 
Hmm. Okay, I don't know what to do with that. There must be a 9 in this quadruple. So that must mean that over here, there needs to be that that 9 needs to be indexed. And it's going to be a column 2 or column 3. So these squares are from 2, 3 and 5. Okay, I don't know if that's important. Can't seem to use it. Um, right. <laughs> so now what, this is the problem with these puzzles. You can just come to an absolutely grinding halt. And when that happens, it is absolutely terrifying. Right. What is the medium digit in here though? It's not five, it's not six. So there must be a four in this domino. And if there's a four in this, oh, we've already got that effectively. Look, by having this nine in these two positions, I just hadn't hadn't put two and two together to get nine. Um, although that, that four is, is the sum of two and two, I suppose. So that's not completely inept. Uh, right, so what does that mean? Well, that means those two squares are a seven, eight pair, I suppose. Which doesn't do, does that do anything? Ah, yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. So, can we put, where do we put 7 and 8 in box 3? We can't put them both in this column, because then we'll get two 9s indexed over here, and that won't work. So one of them must be in that little cell. And that's brilliant, because that effectively completes this quadruple. If this is a 7 or an 8, it can't be a 5 or a 9. So that is a 5-9 pair, which, look, that's doing things. Well, it's probably doing a lot of things, because the 5 needs indexing, and that's in column 8. So one of those must be an 8 and not a 7. Therefore, that can't be an 8. There is definitely an 8 in this domino. Oh, and there's a 5 here, apparently. Is that true? How did I get that? I've got no idea. How did I conclude that wasn't a five? Oh, because that couldn't be a four. Right, so that's perfect. So this has in fact become a four eight pair, which means that cell is, no, it's not that cell that's affected, it's that one. That becomes seven, which makes that six and that eight, which is indexing the five, so that becomes Five, that becomes two um, and that becomes one which is indexing the five so that becomes five and these two sort of point at each other accusingly uh, that becomes one self-referential um, now one of these is a nine so that must be indexed by an eight in one of those two cells and that eight combines with this 8. There's a lot of X-wings going on here to make an 8 in one of those, but there's an 8 looking at these. So that's an 8. Um, this has got 2, 3, 4 in it. So I need, and it, that must be a 6 or a 9. Now, if it was a 9, this would be a 2. That could be true, couldn't it? So we've got six and eight up here. I need to put a two or a three in one of those cells. Ah, I don't know if I can do that easily. I probably can, but I can't see how to do it. Let's look at this column though. I need three, four and six. So that's a, th ah, hang on. This is a three, four or a six by Sudoku. Well, it can't be four and it doesn't seem to be able to be six. So I think that's a three which means this down here is now a four, six pair. And I've got to, ah, look, I've got to put three around this quadruple. So that now is definitely in that, this uh, configuration here, which means that is not a three, but this, we also now need to put two in here, look, because we need a low digit that can't be a one or a three. So this has become, after all this, this has become two, six, eight. So that means there is a nine in one of those three cells. I'd actually like it to be down here so we can finish that two, three, four quadruple off. This cell here in the corner is a five. That's a three now, because it can't be a two, remember. Uh, this three is indexing a nine. So that's a nine, that's a one, that's a three, that's a six. 
This is so silly. <laughs> this is now one. Um, this is indexing a nine, so that's become a nine. That's become a two. That's indexing a five. Ah, oh, that finishes the one five nine down here. That six does the six and the four. This needs sevens and eights into it. Oh, that's almost. That's probably resolved in some sudoku -y way that I don't understand. Um, what about those squares? Two, four, and seven. Can we do those? Possibly not. Two, four, seven. Uh, this must be a high digit, mustn't it? Because we've got the low digit, we've got the medium digit. So that's got to be a seven, in fact. And that's going to index a nine. So that's a seven, that's an eight, that's a seven, that's a seven. So seven is now by Sudoku in this cell, which means this can't be a six because that's indexing this this digit. I think with a, I don't know whether I'm doing this in any way skillfully or not, but I can totally appreciate how knowing the secret of these puzzles is a massive advantage. Um, now, what's this square? That's got to be a six. Oh, it can't be a nine apparently, so it has to be a six. Oh, and that's forced because that's a two, yeah. So that's a, that's all forced. This nine didn't interrupt my two, three, four triple, which is now a two, three, four triple along with a six, uh, which I don't seem to be able to do anything with at all. Oh, I, no, I can do something with it. Where do I put seven around that triple? Well, it can't go in those squares. Doesn't appear to be able to go there, so it must go here which push the five downwards. So that's a five, that's a five, that's a two. This is all getting indexed. So that should be a three to index that. That fixes my deadly pattern. That two fixes the two and the nine. The seven fixes the seven and the eight, the eight, the one, the one and the four, good grief. So that's a four and that's a nine and that's all that all seems to be working. These squares are three and six, which must, well, they're not going to be resolved by indexing, so they need to be sorted out by Sudoku somehow. Uh, don't know how that's going to work. Ah, but look, this is not a two or a four, and neither is that, so that is a two, four pair. Ah, and the four can't go on this side of it, so this is fixed. That's two, that's four, that's five now, so that's four to index it. That's eight, that's eight, that's six. These are indexing the nine, so that's nine, that's five. <laughs> that's six, that's nine. It is a mad puzzle, a mad puzzle. And how, how impressive is it that this has been set by a 12 year old boy. I mean, it's just wonderful. Grockles, you must be so proud of your son. It's just mad. That's a four by Sudoku. This is a seven. I think we might be finishing off here. Um, what do we need in this box? We need a four and an eight. Four and eight can go in. It's not broken yet. That will be a two. And I think, let's click tick. Yay. Why isn't that? That's just magnificent. The, o the only question mark we're left with is what's going on with the title. Maybe I just failed to count the nines correctly. Um, but I loved that. That was a really, really cool puzzle. And what I'm most intrigued about is how hard is that puzzle without the trick? Because I imagine it's harder than I found it. But you guys are going to have to let me know in the comments. So if you tried this without knowing the secret, was it much harder? Or was it easier even? Maybe it's easier. I doubt it's going to be easier, but it could be. Um, but yeah, it's magnificent. The highlight, the highlight of this puzzle for me was how this and this interacted. The fact that I could basically work out or get these two digits down as a result of how this interacted with this, it was really magical. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, because there had to be a six or a seven in one of those that had to go there. And then these two digits had to include a five or a six, which had to go there. And then it was very clear to see that this couldn't index to this, this, um, this position. Because if that was a six, I think that became a seven or something. Um, yeah, it's just quality, absolute quality. And I loved the fact that it's sort of collaboration between a father and son. 
Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Thank you.